Hi, in this next video I will show you a few things in Altium in schematics which really wrecks my nerves. Um, let me give you an example here. This is uh, schematics and I'm editing buses. And editing buses can be really annoying. I mean, come on, uh, if you look at here and you want to move this bus a little bit to shape it, I can click here and move it and you see that the whole bus is moving, which is, oh, come on, not useful. What if I just click again and now these two dots will become red? Maybe now I will edit only this part. Uh -uh. Not working. If I click on the um, vertex here and I move it, then I can edit it. So that's the only way I can reshape the bus actually. What if I draw another bus? If I just draw it again from here to here and try to make it um, like that and then I would like to delete this segment I will click twice so that these two dots get red and I click delete and uh, -uh it doesn't delete as I thought it will. So again, that's a problem. Uh, so the best way to edit buses actually is to delete it completely and draw again. And um, what else? Uh, reshaping the blocks, the sheet um, uh, blocks. If I reshape it, let's say if I just move this port entry, sheet entry up and down, you see that the track doesn't move with it. Well, maybe if I select only the track, the net label and the sheet entry and move them again, only the line is moving. Again, a problem because I have to move, I have to deselect everything, click on the sheet entry, move it separately, then move the track separately. And the same stands with the bus. If I move that one up and down, I will actually move only the sheet entry. What if I uh, want to resize the block? If I just move the, sh the border, you'll see that everything disconnects. If I move it to the other way, it actually overlaps with the track. Oh, come on. You could do it better, Altium. Really, you could do that better. What if I want to move this block a little bit? If I just want to move it upwards, I will select only the block. Maybe I'll just really select only the block and move it. And now you see what happens. Everything is messy. Well, I have to undo. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I should select the whole block together with the lines and the, and the buses and move it now. And now the buses will move upwards and downwards. Okay, maybe I did not want to select the whole bus. Maybe I just wanted to select everything, all these parts except the bus. Okay, the same story. What if I select only this part of the bus, that part of the bus, so that it becomes red and that one. So these are the red dots now and the rest is selected. I'm moving it. Uh-uh, doesn't work. So it's a pain in the ass, as you see. And here, you may notice that this sheet entry is misaligned with the bus entry here. So I will move the wire upwards and uh -uh, because the grid is off, I have to move this and now it's okay. So at least the moving of the, of the um, sheet entries does um, snap to the grid. Well, that's quite good, at least one thing. Um, what about the lines, reshaping the lines. Here I have four, four wires actually, and I would like to reshape them. Okay, I will, first of all, let me move this block up, up or down, and you see that it works quite well, but not exactly. I would really prefer that these tracks here are moving as they supposed to. If I move even upwards, you'll see that I'll make a lot of short circuits here. So not a good thing. Maybe I have to reshape these lines separately. So I will just select them and move them. And that quite works actually. Uh-uh, actually doesn't. The lines can get longer, but they cannot get shorter. So again, I have a problem. What about on, on the other side? If I move them like that and check on this side here, you'll see that actually they overlap on the other side. So actually I have to reshape each one by one. Let's do that. I selected this line, reshape it. Not really. So maybe I have to select only this line separately. So now these two vertexes are red. So I might now move only this part. Uh, -uh. not a chance. So 
maybe I have to draw the new line, a new wire probably. So I will draw it like here maybe. Uh, okay. Okay, now I will delete that one. Clicking once, clicking twice, it becomes red. At least that works. And all the rest, I have to do similar. So reshaping such wires can be a pain. So don't use 45 degree angles on wires, use 90 degrees. And that would probably be a little bit better. What else? Um, <laughs> moving ports, moving sheet entries, that was already done. And um, yeah, most for now, that's it. Maybe I'll find some other stuff later. Moving buses can really be frustrating. For example, here I had just uh, drawn a bus that is going from here up downwards and I would like to move it. So let's say I will click on the bus and I will try to move it. See what happens. <laughs> Not very useful, is it? Now, uh, if I moved the whole bus together with the nets, only the bus is moving. Come on, I selected the nets. Okay, I will select from right to left like that. So I selected nets and bus. Now the whole bus is moving, which I don't want. I just want to move that part of the bus. So I might just unselect this bus from here, which actually now it's getting red. So it might work now. No, it doesn't. So moving this bus actually means I want have to delete that. And now I will make a new one. I will now move this, let's say, to that position, which I was uh, wanted. And now I will redraw the bus. And ma please make sure that you redraw it once forever, because moving it will also make your nerves really wrecking. One of the things that really annoys me also is when I want to move a block, let's say that one here, and I select it and I want to move it upwards. As you see, the, the wire does not make a corner in the middle of the wire, but actually it does uh, start cornering already at the beginning of this pin. So when I move it upwards, I always make this series of short circuits. So moving that line would be possible only by pressing control and then it would break at the beginning. I would move it somewhere and then I would have to make the wire again. I think that that w wouldn't be so hard to change um, in Altium next updates. So if you can use 90 degrees angles in Altium, like here, now if I move this block here up and down, you will see there are no problems in wires. Actually, if I even move it further downward, you will see that probably no short circuits will appear, which is actually denoted by this small arrow next to the small uh, um, uh, mark next to my mouse here. Yeah. So, it seems okay. What about here? If I now move this block up or down, so I will now select this block together with the net labels here and try to move it. It actually works. Much better than before, actually. So, yeah, using 90 degrees angles is preferable in Altium. Here I use 45 degree and you will probably see a problem. I will try to do it as well as I can, selecting only net labels here. Ah, uh, well, not that good, is it? At least no short circuits can be made, but still use 90 degrees angles. That's my advice here. What also can be quite annoying is if you use net labels too much without buses or wires, like here, for example, where this microcontroller has only net labels to connect with the rest of the schematics, and you don't have any idea where this SPDAC CSBL goes. So you have to find it. So you go to here, copy and control F, you paste it here and find it. And you actually find it in one, two, three places. So now I know where it goes, but that's quite annoying because you have to do it anywhere, anytime you forget it. And therefore it's much better if you can connect it with wires if possible. So here I will use wire and connect this SPDUCT CSBL to here. And actually I have to be very careful not to make a short circuit. And here it was quite lucky it was, that line was off grid. So I'll try to move it away and try to connect it as well. Okay, like here. Net label, and now I will connect that SPDEC CSIR as well, and 
If you can, of course, you can move and rearrange the sheet entries here to make these lines not crossing. They can cross, but it's much better if they don't. So I will now try to rearrange it. I will move that one upwards and look here. It cannot go in the, in the mid place here, even though it would actually snap to the grid, which is the next annoying thing. So what I have to do, I have to move this wire upwards and then move this net label separately upwards and then move that down and actually now it will snap. So that's another annoying thing in Altium. And um, now rearranging this uh, sheet entries again takes a lot of time to finish it. If you want to resize the block, you can grab at its border and move it upwards. But the name of the block and the value does not move with it. So we have to select each one separately and move it upwards, which sometimes is quite hard because you cannot agree the green, see the green um, square, the green rectangle inside the green area. So moving this border downwards doesn't move the, these two texts as well. And selecting them both and moving them down doesn't work. You have to select each one separately and move it down, which is again quite an awkward uh, situation. And please Altium, do repair that. One of the things that are quite annoying is if you do not use grid consistently. Um, what is grid in schematics? Well, if you move um, a label, you will see that it has some sort of a grid snapping. If you press letter G, you will have even more coarse grid. If you press G again, you will have very fine grid. So I would suggest using coarse grid, the most coarse grid all of the time. Why? If you change that grid settings during your net, uh, your schematics building, then you might encounter a problems like that. Of course, here, this wire does not attach to this sheet entry. So if I move that sheet entry, you will see that it actually snaps to different features like, for example, this line. So that's quite okay. Uh, and I know that this line is uh, aligned with the grid, as I suppose so at least. Uh, I mean, I have to check it really, because here you see that the grid actually is here and here. So that one is somewhere in the middle. So I will decrease that or I will make this label snap to the grid actually, which I can't because I have the coarse grid selection. So I will press little G and I will try to snap it now. And I might press G again to have a half grid settings. Okay, I think that's okay now. So now I can connect these lines one after another and it takes some time. I mean, snapping to grid, aligning to grid takes a lot of time. For example, here, okay, this net label is snapped now. What about that one? Well, I would like to, but it doesn't because it is not, um, I have to press letter G again and I will then try to put it to a certain point here. Now I think it is quite well snapped to that line. And if you just miss it a little bit, pressing G again, let's say if I have the, the course, the fine grid setting and I move it here, you'll see that you actually don't see where the snapping point of that net label is because it's so hardly visible. I think when this small thing appears here on the line, small feature, then this is actually snapped to the grid and to the line. That's even more important, of course. And here, for example, I would like to change the grid here. Okay, I have to do it separately for the sheet entry and for the net labels and for the uh, power ports. Now, if I have a coarse grid, now I can move these sheet entries up and down as I want, and that's fine. Um, and having a fine grid, of course, that's, you can easily make a mistake like here. So yeah, use grid consistently. And if not absolutely necessary, do use the coarse grid settings.